Hi everyone, I am Burak Tarik. Today I will make a presentation to you. Topic of my presentation is nanotechnology in sports. Contents of my presentation are what is nanoscience, what is nanotechnology, history of nanotechnology, nanotechnology in sports, nanotechnology in sport branches, advantages and disadvantages of nanotechnology in sport equipment, conclusions, and references. Let's start with nanoscience. What is nanoscience? The word nanoscience refers to the study, manipulation, and engineering of matter, particles, and structures on the nanometer scale. Important properties of materials, such as the electrical, optical, thermal, and mechanical properties, are determined by the way molecules and atoms assemble on the nanoscale into larger structures. Moreover, in nanometer size structures, these properties often differ than on macro scale because quantum mechanical effects become important. What is nanotechnology? Nanotechnology is the application of nanoscience leading to the use of new nanomaterials and nanoscience components in useful products. Nanotechnology will eventually pro provide us with the ability of design custom-made materials and products with new enhanced properties, new nanoelectronics components, new types of smart medicines and sensors, and even interfaces between electronics and biological systems. These newborn scientific disciplines are created at the interface between physics, chemistry, material science, microelectronics, biochemistry, and biotechnology. Control of these disciplines therefore requires an academic and multidisciplinary scientific education. History of Nanotechnology the emergence of nanotechnology in the 1980s was caused by the convergence of experimental advances such as the invention of the scanning tunneling microscope in 1981 and the discovery of fuller Reynolds in 1985 with the elucidation and popularization of a conceptual framework for the goals of nanotechnology beginning with the 1986 publication of the book engines of creation. The permanent father figures of nanotechnology are Richard Feynman, Noria Taniguchi and Eric Drexler. Richard Feynman. The American physicist Richard Feynman lectured there is plenty of room at the bottom at an American Physical Society meeting at Caltech on December 29 in 1959 which is often held to have provide inspiration for the field of nanotechnology. Feynman had described a process by which the ability to manipulate individual atoms and molecules might be developed, using one set of prices tools to build and operate another proportionally smaller set, so on down to the needed scale. In the course of this, he not scaling issues would arise from the changing magnitude of various physical phenomena. Gravity would become less important, surface tension and van der Waals attraction would become more important. After Feynman, interest in plant of room in scientific literature greatly increased in early 1990s. This is probably because the term nanotechnology gained serious attention just before that time. Following its use by Eric Drexler in his 1986 book Engines of Creation, The Coming Era of Nanotechnology, which took the famous concept of a billion tiny factories and added the idea that they could make more copies of themselves via computer control instead of control by a human operator. And in a cover article headlines, Nanotechnology, published later that year in a mass circulation science-oriented magazine Omni.
Norio Taniguchi. The Japanese scientist called Norio Taniguchi of Tokyo University of Science was first to use the term nanotechnology in a 1974 conference. To describe semiconductor processes such as thin film deposition and ion beam milling exhibiting characteristic control on the order of a nanometer. His definition was nanotechnology mainly consists of the processing of separation, consolidation and deformation of materials by one atom or one molecule. However, the term was not used again until 1981 when Eric Drexler who was unaware of Taniguchi's prior use of the term, published his first paper on nanotechnology in 1981. Eric Drexler, his 1991 PhD work at the MIT Media Lab was the first doctoral degree on the topic of molecular nanotechnology and his thesis, Molecular Machinery and Manufacturing with Applications to Computation was published as Nanosystems, Molecular Machinery, Manufacturing and Competition, which received the Association of American Publishers Award for Best Computer Science Book of 1992. After the history of nanotechnology, I will talk about topic of my presentation, nanotechnology in sports. With the ever-growing development of new technologies, sports cannot go together without technology. The sports industry is getting better day by day by leveraging several areas. The sports industry also deals with the smallest things called nanotechnology across the globe. But how can the very small things be applied to the massive world of sports and can it really make the difference between winning and losing? With the advent of nanotechnology in the sports industry, there has been the benefit of reducing the equipment weight and amplifying efficiency. Nanotechnology has fetched more sturdiness, potency and lightweight at the same time making athletes feel comfy, safer, less prone to injuries and agile than the prior. Equipment such as tennis or badminton rackets, racing bicycles, golf balls, baseball bats, archery arrows, skis, hockey sticks, fly fishing routes, and so on are field sports equipment that enhance their performance with the event of nanotechnology in the sports industry. After the overview of nanotechnology in sports, now we will examine nanotechnology in sport branches in detail. First branch of sport is tennis. In the early 2000s, tennis ace Roger Federer started using nano-enhanced rackets, reportedly winning Wimbledon with one. Many tennis rackets, as well as containing carbon nanotubes, are also reinforced with SMPs. These make the rackets more stable and stronger and offer 22% more hitting power than non-nano rackets. SMPs can also be found in skis where they confer greater Flexibility meaning the square experiences, slicker turns and rides. Golf. The sport of golf has also been impacted by nanotechnology. Nanocompass is replacing traditional materials used in the manufacturing of golf clubs, making them lighter and stronger. For example, nanomaterials are used to increase the power and accuracy of the club by lowering its weight and center of gravity. Golf balls have also been modified. Applying new materials has allowed the ball to fly along a much stronger path and avoid an uneven spin. Formula 1 In Formula 1 racing, where winning the race depends on the weight of the car, the tires used, and the weather conditions, Nanocompasses can play an important role. They have been incorporated into the car body, making it lightweight and hard wearing. Necessary when spending ground attack at over 300 mph, and smart particles can fill the gaps between the paint molecules and the metal. 
helping the card to go up to 37 mph faster. But that's not the only role nanotechnology has in F1. Nanofibers can be found in the brakes and nanoparticles in lubricate, lubricants to reduce wear and tear. Cycling When it comes to professional cycling, every second counts towards the victory. Chains have been done in the manufacturing of bicycles by using the carbon nanotubes and the carbon fiber resin. These chains made bicycles lighter and stronger, that in turn helped cyclists to make a greater difference in cycling. Football Shin pads used by footballers are often made from nanostructured plastics. Because they are lightweight and its increased strength means that thin layers offer sufficient protection from a kick on the shins. Nano clay materials are also used in the leaning of footballs as barrier materials which retain the pressure in the ball for longer. Furthermore, football kit manufacturers have introduced fabrics which are naturally antibacterial, waterproof and old repellent, anti-odor and anti-stain, with the help of added nanoparticles of silver and titanium. Archery Arrows and bows made out of carbon nanotubes, graphene and buggy paper will make arrows super strong and very accurate, as well as thinner and thus faster. Advantages of nanotechnology in sport equipments are Enhanced durability and strength to weight ratio Reduced friction and weight Increased hardness Wear resistance and resiliency Disadvantages of nanotechnology in sport equipments Cost and availability are the disadvantages of nanotechnology in sport equipments. Finally, I want to talk about conclusions. Nanotechnology, being a disruptive technology, has impacted every sphere of our daily life and sport is no exception. Nano-enhanced sporting equipments are much more performance enhancing and superior in terms of strength, stiffness and durability as compared to conventional sporting equipments. Various companies are coming up with more innovative ideas to implement nanotechnology for improving sports equipments even further. Many prominent Sports persons are opting to have nano incorporated sporting equipment to enhance their performances. However, being an expensive technology, nano enhanced sporting equipment cannot be afforded by each and every sports person, and unless each component athlete is given the same sporting equipment, it will be unfair and difficult to judge the natural sporting ability and humans. Therefore, the ultimate goal to be achieved should be to push the boundaries of performance levels rather than pushing the cost of high-tech sporting equipment. Also, in order to address the possible toxicity issues related to nano-enhanced sporting equipment, a proper monitoring of their manufacturing processes, period of use and disposal is needed to prohibit the release of nanoparticles due to degradation or any other reason. Finally, I want to say that, all in all, nanotechnology has many more applications in the sports world and ignoring its importance would be a terrible mistake in the science world. Nanotechnology will definitely make an incredible contribution to further improvement of our society in the future. These are 
my references. My presentation is over. Thank you for listening to me.